Welcome to Church Online. It's great to have you with us. Special welcome if you're with us for the first time. It's a joy to gather, to worship, to pray and to grow together. My name is Lynn. I'm the minister at Adelaide West and I'll be sharing with you today. We light a candle as a reminder that Jesus is present with us as we meet, ever present with each of us in our everyday lives, our business as usual, calling us to follow, calling us to reflect his light in a troubled world. This week is Refugee Week. We remember refugees forced to leave their homes for many reasons, including conflict and violence. At the end of 2020, there were estimated 82 million people forcibly displaced from their homes, 48 million of them in their own country. One in every 95 people on earth has fled their home. And astonishingly, 42% of the world's refugees in 2020 were children. 86% of refugees are hosted in developing countries. You know, we pray that Australia would be a welcoming country to vulnerable refugees in our world. Next week, on the 22nd of June, we celebrate 45 years of faith, life and witness of the Uniting Church. And the Assembly has put out a five-minute video where the President, Reverend Shal Reverend Sharon Hollis, and others share what the Uniting Church means to them. And I commend it to you. Last week, Josephine Nyande shared her story about her health journey over the last year. Josephine and Matthew are regularly part of Church Online, so it seemed appropriate to record it and include it in this service. It's inspiring to hear how God turned her situation around. We sing together. There's a wideness in God's mercy. Like the wideness of the sea, the love of God is broader than the measures of our mind. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, church. My name is Josephine, as Lynn uh, Le just introduced me. I've been in this church since, since we came uh, 2004. We've been attending uh, Adelaide West. 
It has been so, it has been so good, uh, like we've been part of this church. And God has been really in our life, me and my family and friends. This church has been so great to us. So um, at the beginning of uh, last, last year, it was uh, my fifth year birthday. At the beginning of last year, everything was going well with me. I go to gym, exercise, diet, just to, to, to make myself fit and be healthy. So during that time, I was not sick any, anyway. Until after my, my 50th birthday, we celebrate it here. And I'm so grateful that God gave me the opportunity to celebrate that day, to see that day. And afterwards, something happened in my life that I was not expecting at all. But with God, everything is possible. So on the, um, after my birthday on the, in September the, the 20th, I went to work. I'm, I'm a carer. I work in aged care. I went to work that day on Monday. After, after work, I came home. I came home. I was fine. I even did some shopping before I came home because I was having a meeting with my friends on, on Tuesday evening. So I did all my shopping. I came home. On Tuesday morning, I was feeling my back was really so heavy. I was like, what's going on? Because I normally have a back pain, but that one was really not normal. Like, I was not feeling really 100%. Then most of them, when it happened to me, I go to the gym. So I say, okay, let me go to the gym. Maybe when I come back, I will be okay. I went to the gym um, in the morning, nine to nine for, for 45 minutes. I do 45 minute exercise. I came home, I cook, I clean, I did everything I normally did. I normally do at home. So in the evening, then I cooked the food. My friends came over. We were having a dinner. Then I start feeling like I have fever. Like it was not really a pleasant for me that moment. Then my daughter, Mama, also said, Mama, you can take Panadol and go to bed. She helped me to go to bed. Then she gave me Panadol. But the whole night, I didn't sleep well. So the next day, I said, uh, let me rest, maybe I'll be fine on, on the next day I have to go to work. So on Wednesday, I, I stay home whole day. I didn't go to hospital because I was just thinking that it's something that will go away. So I was lying down. But Thursday morning, I didn't sleep on Wednesday night. Thursday morning, I feel like I didn't sleep, but I felt like something is not right. So I said, okay, let me just have a rest. Maybe afterwards I'll be fine. So I slept in the morning until 10.30, going to 11. Then I wake up, but I was so dizzy. I tried to go to the, to the bathroom, I can't. I walked to the shower, I want to have a shower, I couldn't shower. On my way back, then I just saw the blackout, I fall. Luckily, God was really in my life, like God didn't want me to die. Because what happened to me, it was me alone in the house. What happened to me, it was not because of God. I wouldn't be standing here today talking to you people about what happened to me. But God did everything for me possible to stand here this morning and, and, and testify his goodness in my life. I had a fall. I, I hit my chest on, on the bathtub, but I didn't hit my head. So I crawled because my room to the bath, uh, to the to, to the shower, it's not that far. So I crawl in my, I couldn't stand anymore. So I have to crawl and I lie down on the, in front of my bed. Then I pass out. God came on, for, on my rescue again and I wake up. I wake up, I just crawl, stretch my hand and I took my phone number and my phone on the, on the uh, uh, table. For me to put my four digits number, password to call that, that somebody for help, it was so hard for me. But God gave me the strength. I put that number. The, first, the last person that called me before I slept was one of my friends. So she was the first person that my hand touched her name. Then I called. Then she, she didn't do anything. She just came to me straight. As she came, the way she saw me, she said, oh, Joe, you are not good. This is not right. Then she took, a, she took a phone, she called my husband and all the children, they came to my rescue. They came home, they took me to uh, Queen Elizabeth's hospital. 
We went there. They, I, I, I can't walk. They put me in the wheelchair. They put me inside. With God's grace, I went in. They put me on the bed. The only thing I could remember when they took my clothes off and my necklace to give my, my daughter. That's the only thing I could remember at that time. I was in, unconscious for 10 days. Lying down, my family we are in so much pain. I don't know what, what they were going through at that time because I was not alive. Because I would say I was dead, half dead. But God came back to my rescue and took me off that bed with prayers from all over the world, from the church, from my friends, from families. Even I could remember um, my daughter told me, he said, Mama, there was um, my, my husband's nephew, uh, he's a reverend. His, uh, she said, my, my uncle pray, um, she, she, he asked us to put water in the cup for, to pray on it. He was in overseas when he prayed on that water. Then they give me that water, then I drank it. Agnes said, Mama, since that day you drank that water, that was the day that I, I, we started seeing uh, that you, you, you recovering. Because with that prayer was really powerful that the water was blessed and you drank it and at the end of the day look at you today so i'm really here to testify god a goodness in my life and the life of my family we are so grateful like today is my 51 birthday i'm standing here giving that testimony it's not easy but i really thank god for my life and the life of my friends and my family and all those that took their time to pray for me i really thank you and i appreciate every one of you here i thank the church family and friends my husband my children they were there for me hundred percent and even when i wake up anytime i open my eyes i see somebody next to my bed that was how the care I had when I was in that condition. And that is what everyone, uh, everyone is uh, uh, thinking about. Like, if we are in that type of situation, you need people around you. You need friends around you. You need family around you. And I 100% got that support from my family and my friends. So I thank God. I thank everyone that's here this morning to, to hear my, my, my testimony. And I pray that this type of thing will not happen to anyone that we know in our life. Because it's something that nobody will know if he can go out of it or not. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for my life. Oh, Josephine, stay. We pray for you. Oh, yeah. Um, a beautiful story of God's goodness to us. We'd like to pray for Josephine. So Matthew, could you come and join us up here and any of the elders that are here and also Phil, could you come as well? And we'll just stand around Josephine and pray for her and giving thanks to God. Loving God, you are good. We're so grateful for your love and your healing power. We're so thankful for the story that Josephine has just shared of your goodness, of carrying her and carrying her family at this time. We thank you that she stands here for her 51st birthday when she wasn't sure that she would. We ask a blessing on her a continued blessing of good health. We pray that uh, she will continue to grow in you and to be a witness to your goodness and your love. We pray for Josephine and Matthew and for all their family. We pray a blessing on them. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks for her testimony, the way that you carried her through, the way that she got through, the way that there were people around her, people praying. And now she walks and works and shares with us. We are so grateful and we praise you. So blessings on the Neande family. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The reading today is Luke chapter 8, 
verses 26 to 39. They sailed to the region of Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region and of Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Before and after. If you Google before and after, one finds countless photos of after weight loss or after makeup or surgery or special creams. You know, we seem fixated with before and after. There's before coffee and after coffee in the morning, before the shower and after the shower. Here we have a before and after story. It's a complex story. I wonder what we make of it. Jesus and the disciples sail to another region, a foreign region. They're met by a troubled man. There is some interesting dialogue. Then a herd of pigs runs into a lake and drowns. People from the surrounding towns come to see what's happened. The man is sitting at the feet of Jesus. The people are afraid and ask Jesus to leave. It's intriguing with demons and foreigners and voices and pigs. You know, Jesus has been teaching in the villages in Galilee, his territory. His disciples are with him and things are going quite well. Large crowds are gathering. And then one day he says to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. This is a huge statement. We we easily miss the significance of it. The other side was a technical term, not just about geography, but if we look at the geography for a moment, you can see on the map that the left-hand side is the region of Galilee, whereas the bottom right is the region known as the Decapolis. The Sea of Galilee is 13 kilometres wide and 21 kilometres long. It's shallow, it's about 44 metres deep, and it's 210 metres below sea level below the Mediterranean Sea. It's the largest freshwater lake in the world. Sorry, the lowest freshwater lake in the world. Our lowest point in Australia is Lake Eyre, and that's only 15 metres below sea level. The Decapolis region was enemy territory, a pagan people. The Decapolis is filled with pagan temples and cults, violence, wealth, and they worship pigs. 
the most unclean animal to the Jews. They can't eat or touch pigs. This is the centre for Roman power with a legion of 6,000 Roman soldiers and the symbol for the legion is a pig's head. So to the Jews, this is the place where Satan lived. Nobody goes over to the other side, especially not a rabbi. And Jesus says, we imagine casually, let's go over to the other side of the lake. Almost like he doesn't realise it's the other side. He's saying, let's go from the region of Galilee across the Sea of Galilee to the Decapolis, enemy territory. Let's go from our people, our world, our customs to the other side. Now, there's a bit of extra context here that broadens our view. On the way to the other side, Jesus fell asleep in the boat. They have a rough crossing There's a storm that completely rattles the disciples, despite a number of them being commercial fishermen. They wake Jesus up and he rebuked the wind and the raging waters and the storm died down. He calms the troubled waters, the lake storm. And now he has a troubled man in front of him. Just one man after all those big crowds in Galilee. The man is naked and is wandering around the tombs. He is considered totally unclean by the Jews. They would never be around the tombs. He has been rejected and separated from his community. He's self-destructive. He's desperate. He's unwanted and unwelcome. Jesus asks him, what is your name? And the answer is, we are legion for we are many relating to the legion of the foreign soldiers. The demons are afraid and asked to be sent into a group of pigs and they rush down a steep bank and they drown. So we remember to the Jews the pig is unclean. But to the Canaanites, those on the other side, the pig was regarded as a sacred animal. So the Jews would have seen this as a battle between the forces of darkness and light and the pigs lose Jesus takes authority over oppressive power, power that had isolated this man from his community, robbed him of his wholeness as a person. And then we have the people's response, those tending the pigs. When they came to Jesus, they found the man dressed, seated before him and in his right mind. But they're afraid. And they plead with Jesus to leave them. He's got power, but he's from the other side. So they treat him as someone with an agenda, perhaps a powerful magician. And they're suspicious. They're afraid of someone on the other side. But I love the picture of God calming or healing our troubles. I wonder what troubles you might be experiencing now. Or what troubles people you know are experiencing Troubles include so many things, health issues, work, looking for work, struggling with change, relationships, study, lack of purpose, hurt. You know, the man was driven by something within him that is alien to him. Outside pressures, rejection, separation, things that stopped him from being whole. Likewise, there are outside pressures for us, issues that we're dealing with that stop us from being whole. Perhaps we find ourselves in the tombs, the place of death, separation, rejection. The man knew something was wrong and he fell down before Jesus. He submitted himself and Jesus made him whole. When others came to see him, he was dressed in his right mind. He's healed and restored. There is hope. You know, in God's love, we find truth and promise and hope. As the man was seated before Jesus, sit at the feet of Jesus. Because we can draw near to God when troubles are close. In God, we are restored. In God, we find rest. In God, there is hope. You know, in Psalm 42 and 43, there's this common refrain And in fact, both of them finish with it. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? 
Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. We put our hope in God, as people over the ages have done, as the psalmist writes about, as the troubled man did. In this story, the man asks Jesus if he can go with him, but Jesus says, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. He was best placed to do this. He was whole again. He had hope. He was no longer cut off from society and community. We're to share what God has done. Share the love of God to those around us. Go to the other side. Who are we in this story? I wonder. I wonder if there are times when we're different characters. We can be the lost man, bogged down in life or with life, looking to Jesus, asking for answers. We can be the pig herders or the society around him, not sure what's going on in fear, doubting, perhaps even wanting Jesus to move on. Or we can be Jesus, reaching out to the lost, those that are unwelcomed by others, the unwanted in society, those rejected and separated from their communities. I wonder what this says to us in Refugee Week. We know there are many views about asylum seekers and refugees in our world, but what is the response that Jesus calls us to? Are we welcoming? Are we compassionate? Are we reaching out to help people to be whole? And if we're honest with ourselves, and dig deep, deep in our souls, do we really care? What is Jesus calling us to? So what is our response to all this? I invite you to sit at the feet of Jesus, to allow God to nourish and sustain you, allowing God's presence to heal and restore you. God sends us back into our everyday lives to continue our discipleship. In God's love, we find truth, promise and hope and our response is to tell others how much God has done for us. There's a huge before and after in this story. This man's life was transformed by Jesus. He turned his life around. You could say this man experienced acceptance and transformation from Jesus, which gave him hope. And our vision at Adelaide West is to be a community of acceptance, hope and transformation in Jesus. And this story embodies this. There is a before and after for each of us in our lives. Jesus transforms our lives, turns our lives around, and we respond to God by telling how much God has done, how much God has done for us, and offering God's love to others. Amen.
As we come to our prayer for others, I'm going to start with a prayer written by Abby Benham Bannon, a panel member of the Assembly's Working for Justice Circle. Let's pray together. God of peace, bring light to the dark corners of hearts, to the violent shadows of our world, whose power crushes down inflicting suffering, pushing so many out of their lives and out of their homes. God of welcome, bring warmth to the hearts of the homes to which they flee. May they find safety and comfort in open arms. God of liberation, bring freedom for all people locked up by cruel policies from the bars which bear down on their souls. Freedom to walk the land, to live a life, freedom of spirit. God of justice, open our eyes and give us the courage to call for change for a country that rejects cruelty and violence, that puts down its fear and chooses welcome. This we pray. Lord God, we continue to pray for peace in the Ukraine. And we remember today the millions of people displaced in Ukraine and in the surrounding countries. We pray for families trying to find shelter and food and water for their families. We pray for those that are struggling and suffering. Lord, be with them. We continue to pray for COVID around our lands. And we ask, Lord, for your wisdom that we would as countries be able to work together, that there would be ways that uh, we can move forward to beat this virus. We ask for patience and strength for those that have COVID and for comfort for those who are grieving We pray for people trapped in human trafficking, caught in climate change and pray that you would use us to share and show your love around our world, to be active participants. Lord, we pray for our nation and our community and our church. We remember the Synod meeting here in South Australia at the end of this week for two days. We pray that you would lead and guide all those that meet. We pray for the youth camp happening here in a few, uh, in the middle of July and ask that this would be a time where uh, youth can spend time with you, where seeds are sown, lives are transformed. And remember our local schools As we come to the end of another term, which has been such a struggle, so hard for um, students, staff and teachers, and we just pray that you will give them strength to keep going until the holidays and we pray for refreshment in their lives. And we remember, Holy Spirit, the people on our hearts today, those that are struggling those that have health issues, those that have troubles, people recovering from accidents. Lord God, we lift all of those people to you. You know their needs. We pray for your peace and your love and your hope to surround them at this time. We pray for ourselves. Thank you that you are there in the before and in the after that we can sit at your feet, that our hope is in you, that our lives are turned around by you. And Lord Jesus, we're sorry for those times that we just keep doing our own thing. When we say, think or do things that separate us from you or us from others. And thank you that these things and all our sins are forgiven. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to ponder this story over this next week of the troubled man, of Jesus reaching out to him and of telling the story of what you have done in our lives. 
Help us to look for opportunities to tell the story. And help us in our following and in our serving to always be focused on you. We bring you our giving today, our lives, together with our offering of money, and our giving of practical gifts, and we pray that they would be used wisely to help those who are hurting and troubled in our world. We lift our prayers to you today in the name of Jesus, who is our living hope. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine So great a mercy What heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name. Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living Came the, the morning that sealed the promise Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Oh Jesus, yours is the victory set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip
Thank you for joining us today. If you would like prayer, please send us an email. We would love to pray with you and for you. Thanks to Josephine for sharing her story and allowing us to include it online. This week, in God's love, we find truth and promise and hope. In Jesus, there is before and after for each of us. And we respond to Jesus by telling others of what God has done in our lives. May the grace and the kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ and the extravagant love and presence of God and the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. Blessings in your week.